Today I'm going to be working on trying to get every last cable run for both my ethernet and my coax. I was given a free box of coax and terminators by my cable company and I finally got my new box of coax arrived in from Amazon just yesterday while I was working. So I should be able to finish up all of this stuff at least at this end of the box. You can see over here that for a lot of the locations for the data cables they're just going to get kind of coiled up and looped underneath because I don't have the actual walls in their actual final locations upstairs yet but we'll be able to get this main central location finished up and that'll be pretty nice I'll have to do a little bit of off stream work to actually move over where the cable modem connects to things and I want to try to actually bring the cable modem in down here today as well again another off stream thing but we can uh, we can record that for YouTube using the edge of the vacuum to hook my tape on. So 101 is here and the wall is four and a half. So we'll go to 102 and three quarters. We've got 22 and a quarter off this back wall. And I measured this as five feet from this wall. This is one of those close enough is good enough things. So if I'm not exactly perfectly square to this back wall that's fine because I'm going to be moving this wall this whole wall is going to come over this way that means if I put my tape directly square to this wall or if I'm angled at 15 degrees or whatever as long as I'm somewhere within the middle of where this wall is going to move to we'll be fine I'm cutting just a little bit of a square out of this carpet and I'm going to use my pliers here to pull the carpet up because there is as far as I know perfectly good hardwood flooring under here that I might want to actually maintain and reuse, get refinished and whatnot. So even though this is gonna be inside the wall, I still wanna do some of the you know best practice things and make sure that I'm not damaging what's underneath. This way too, if I change my mind and I decide I just wanna replace the carpet here or I need to get out of here in a hurry and uh, this this room just has one little hole in it that's much easier to sell like it's not good but it's much easier to sell the house this way if I have to than if I have torn a big old chunk out of this end of the room and we'll just ignore the part where I use permanent marker on the carpet so here we can just go straight down so there's that one I don't need a pen for five feet. And we can come five feet this way. And then we'll grab a little piece of testing on cable here, just because this is what I have available. And we'll see if we can pass that right through. I wonder what I can see through the hole. Oh no, that's still in the, the bedroom down there. I can see the instructions. Let's make my life just a little bit easier when I get down there, feed a bit more cable through. And the instructions were here, which makes the cable here. Now this one I'm going to feed through the holes in two directions. So one direction is going to be down through the floor and forward that way. And then the other direction once I have the uh, the floor run figured out. I'm going to get that so it'll just be easy to pull and should be pretty close there. The other direction will be back through that way so I'm starting in the middle. Pull a little bit more out and pull a little bit more through. This stuff was free after all, so why not use it? Okay, let's make sure that's pushed over to one side on the other side. 
Now we get to take a minute and move all of this stuff back over. I'm going to try to make this hole smaller because this is my, my bedroom that I'm living in right now. So that'll make it a little bit more difficult. And this cable is not going to come up through the floor yet. But I do need to drill down from above so that I can get the proper position of the cable in the basement. Which is going to make it a little bit more difficult because I'm trying to get like a one inch hole here. I've got uh, pretty good odds on being able to miss the beams. There's a, a one and a half inch thick beam every 16 inches or so. And the basement is 50 feet long, thereabouts. There we go. Take 50 feet, divide it by 16, multiply that by an inch and a half. Take whatever number that is, divide it into 50 feet long, and you'll get the uh, the chances of me actually hitting, hitting a floor joist. <laughs> I think I'm pretty good. Even if I find a beam, it'll be running this way. I can move over half an inch and drill again, and then I should be clear. Now I think that actually got a beam that time. Because I have no light coming through. Nope. I notice I have an air return here. So I can measure off of this side and see if I'm like dead on 16 here. And it looks like I am. I think I'm pretty good. Oh no, I got through just a bit, just a little bit. This is why you cut your carpet before you drill. I wasn't able to see exactly where it was, but I can see that I did break through. So I'm gonna peel up just a little bit more carpet and try to get it in at a bit of an angle. There we go. So I'm just gonna go down and uh, mark where that is. One of the things I wanted to make sure of when I started doing all of my drilling through my floor joists for all of my plumbing and all of the electrical and, and now these cable runs is I wanted to make sure that I was totally in compliance every single time with how high the holes needed to be, how far apart they needed to be, and all that sort of stuff. I made myself a spacer template. This is for three quarter inch holes. It has the correct space between the holes so that if I put this up here and mark all the way around, if I drill this point and this point, they are far enough up from the bottom and far enough apart from each other. I'm only gonna be drilling one hole for this one, but uh, this little template sure made my life a lot easier. The other thing I wanted to do was make sure that all of my runs were nice and tidy and easy to pull and nice to look at for when the inspectors come. So what I ended up doing was actually taking my laser level, marking two points at either end of the run and actually marking exactly straight lines for the plumbing, for the electrical, for you know my data lines and all of that stuff. If you want your stuff to look pretty and you want it to look uh, maximally professional, it doesn't take a lot of time to do that and you know for sure every single time you're up the correct amount. For plumbing especially, if you're trying to pull some pecs, it can be a lot, a lot easier. Double especially when you're using coiled pecs instead of like the straight pieces. If you have directly straight runs all the way through following a line instead of, well, this one's here, this one's here, this one's here, through each floor joist. So give it a thought. Look up your local building codes for how much space you need up from your floor joists and how much space you need between your holes if you're gonna run two holes. I made this one so that I could run my hot and my cold in a group for each run, but it also works as just a height marker for any of my smaller electrical cables or data cables. This is one of the things that you run into when you don't really plan stuff and you kind of just make it up as you go. I had originally planned to run two pairs of coax and ethernet through these holes and that should have been enough but what I didn't think was I also needed one more coax cable coming all the way back to the mechanical room where the cable internet comes into the house so I really don't think that I can get five cables through these I'm I'm fairly certain I can get four but I don't think I can get five so we're gonna come along and mark another hole beside each of these get the last run from the upstairs bedroom to come through the joists where I need them
Left your belt off for a reason? To save myself some walking back and forth, I'm gonna cut both the cables for one of the runs to about the same length, and I'm gonna try to feed them through each hole at the same time. Like I did with the upstairs tool room, I'm gonna be starting this pole in the middle of the run. I have to take it over that way, but I don't wanna be struggling and pulling this through a right angle turn while I'm feeding it through here. It's gonna be difficult enough with it rubbing against the other cables that are already in the holes anyway. So we're gonna start this way, go there, get it over that way, and then come back to here, pull a bunch out, and send it that way. Thanks, Monkey. Probably should have thought of this a little while ago. If you've got one floppy cable and one relatively stiff cable, you can use just a little bit of a little bit of electrical tape. I'm not even going to be pulling these through any holes. I'm going to be pushing them through holes. So yeah, I don't need hardly any tape here at all. But what I can do now is use the stiffer coax cable basically as a uh, as a fishing line to get the ethernet cable in at the same time. Useful for very awkward to push situations like this. Now that I've got these all run through down to their destination, I have to pull out enough cable, but hopefully not like disgustingly too much, that I can get it over to where it needs to end up under where it will eventually go up through the floor joists. And I'm gonna be guessing at this and it's gonna be wrong and it'll be way too much and that's okay. Way too much is okay, disgustingly too much is a bit wasteful. I was talking a little bit ago about the importance of actually using a laser to mark out where all your holes are going to be so that when you drill your holes and you run your cables, you have a nice straight line here. This electrical line running above me here looks great. It's straight. I'm running these new data lines through existing holes that someone else already drilled kind of just by eyeballing it. And even just over these five floor joists here, I can see it starting to wave. And it just, it looks bad. If you don't care about that sort of thing, then you don't care about that sort of thing. It does actually make it more difficult to pull cables, especially when you need to get two through a hole. Now, imagine if this was Romex and you're trying to get two through a half inch or even two through a five eighths inch hole. It's going to be more difficult to get that through if even if you've just got like an inch of wobble all the way down than it is when you've got a perfectly straight run. So some of you are going to be thinking kind of waste of time, but I think it's worth it. Another thing with keeping things in line is not just in line this way, but in line this way. When whoever drilled these existing holes that I'm using drilled this one, they drilled through here and then without moving their ladder, they reached under and they drilled up through here because of the angle of the drill and the bit and all that sort of thing. So now, if I'm trying to pull straight through, I've got this really, really goofy angle because they drilled up. I actually have to, I'm gonna come back and drill straight through with, with my own bit so that I'm not having to come up and then down and deal with all that sort of thing. It makes it a lot more difficult to pull if you drill up at an angle than if you drill straight through. So take a second and, and re reposition your lighter if you have to. Also, when you're pulling it, if you're trying to pull through at this sort of goofy angle here, you can potentially do real damage to your cables that you're trying to pull through there. Just little things where, you know, it takes three seconds to move your ladder, move your ladder.
This last line that I'm running here is a, a very, very temporary line just up to where my TV currently is so I can still, you know, Netflix. Instead of drilling holes through the floor joists, I'm just taking some of the, uh, the low voltage staples and holding it up out of the way so it doesn't dangle too much. They'll come out very easily when the time comes, but for just right now, this will be just fine. If you're looking at this and thinking, hey, you know what? I should really get along and, and wire up my whole house with Cat 5e or Cat 6 or Cat 7. Like, I, some people in the Twitch chat are just absolute ballers and nothing but Cat 7 and, and 40 gig Ethernet is good enough for them. If you're going to do that because you think it's fun or because you think it's useful, you know what? Feel free and take the time and enjoy taking the time to get it nice and neat and as organized as you want. This is something you're only ever going to do once for your whole house. So if, if you want to take a day or two and like get everything perfectly lined up and show it off on, on the subreddits for, for the cable organizing and, and, and all that sort of thing, you go ahead and do it. I'm taking a little bit of extra time to separate out my coax from my Cat5 just because, you know what, I am having a bit of fun with this and this is the only time I'll be doing this for this entire house. So I'm, I'm taking my time, I'm having a little bit of fun.